Now we've all been told that fruit is the ultimate health food, natural, colorful, and sweet. But here's the question, is fruit really good for you? Or is it just another source of sugar dressed up as healthy? Today, I'll take you through the scientific evidence and the evolutionary story that might change the way you look at your morning smoothie. Now, let's start off with something that Paul Saladino often points out. Fruit is different from vegetables. Why? Because fruits are designed to be eaten. That's their whole evolutionary purpose, to entice animals to eat their food because it's sweet, because it's colorful, and because it's very flavorsome. So that we eat them and we defecate them out and we spread their seeds, helping them to regrow again. Vegetables, on the other hand, are the leaves, the stems, and the roots of plants. And the plants don't want you to eat those parts. Because they're not like animals, they can't run away, they can't bite or claw at you, they have to have some sort of defense mechanism. And that defense mechanism is releasing chemical compounds such as lectins, oxalates, phytates, that essentially damage the gut or block nutrient uptake or do a lot of other harmful things to your body. And I've actually created another video that goes through all of the issues that come with vegetables. I will put a link on my description below so that you can watch that in your own time as well. But getting back to fruit, should we just be gorging on fruit since it wants to be eaten? Absolutely not. The fruit that we eat today is nothing like the fruit that our ancestors ate. Ancient fruits were fibrous, small, and mildly sweet. Over centuries, we have uh, selectively bred and genetically modified fruit to become a more juicy, more sweet, and bigger than ever. Take a banana for an example. Wild bananas were tiny, uh, they were packed with seeds, and they were barely sweet. The modern banana has been bred into a sugary dessert, basically a, a dessert steak. And um, even with mangoes, mangoes have more than 45 grams of sugar. That's actually even more than a can of Coke. And we have to question what kind of sugar is in it. It's mostly fructose and glucose. Now, some people will tell you that it's natural sugar, so it's okay. But your body doesn't care where it came from or whether it's glucose or fructose. They both are harmful for your body. Uh, fructose is almost entirely metabolized in your liver. And in high amounts, it contributes to fat buildup in the liver. It's the same process that's found in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Glucose, on the other hand, spikes blood sugar and insulin, and together they cause glycation. Uh, this accelerates aging and eventually causes premature cell death. Yes, fruit sugar may not be as bad as refined white sugar uh, or high fructose corn syrup, but the biology is the same. Eat too much of it and you're still overdosing your system. And that's the problem. Fruit today is hyperpalatable. It's sweet, it's juicy, it's everywhere, and it's available all year round. Our ancestors may have eaten fruit occasionally when it was seasonally available for a few weeks in summer, but now, you know, bananas are available year round and strawberries are available for most of winter. That wasn't available to ancestors beforehand. We're not designed for constant, unlimited consumption of fruit. And sugar is not the only problem. Let's talk about some of the other downsides of fruit. First, there's dental health. The sugars and acids in fruit feed oral bacteria and they erode the enamel. Citrus fruits in particular are highly acidic. Research in Carey's research in 2015 confirmed that frequent consumption of um, citrus fruits will massively increase tooth erosion. Once our enamel is gone, it doesn't come back. So dental disease is a big problem with excessive fruits consumption. Secondly, Allergies, I touched upon this on my other video as well. Many of the most dangerous food allergens actually come from plants, not meat. Fruits like kiwi, mango, and strawberries are well-known triggers for oral allergy syndrome. A 2018 review in Current Allergy and Asthma Reports shows that fruit-related allergies are becoming increasingly common, especially in children. Thirdly, of course, pesticides, and fruits are among the most pesticide-contaminated foods in the world. In fact, every year, the Environmental Working Group's Dirty Dozen, uh, they list the most contaminated foods in the world, and fruits like strawberries, apples, and grapes are always at the very top. These chemicals are designed to kill pests, and evidence shows long-term exposure to pesticides lead to higher risks of cancers like um, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and even prostate cancer. So do you really think by eating these fruits that you're not exposed to these risks? And finally, uh, fructose and hunger. 
unlike glucose, fructose does not trigger hormones like insulin or um, leptin. Uh, these are the hormones that signal to our brain that we are full. So when you eat lots of fruit, you lose your ability to signal to your brain that you're full, and this leads to less satiety, and this leads to overconsumption of the fruit. You've seen this. When you eat a really nice mango, it's really difficult to stop because you're not getting those signals. So what's the takeaway? Evolution may have designed fruit to be eaten, but humans have redesigned fruit to the point where it's not even recognizable, where a fruit is basically just a sweep wrapped in a natural skin of a banana. You know, like bananas, mangoes, grapes, they're essentially sugar bombs. While berries and smaller seasonal fruits may have some health benefits, eating fruit daily in large amounts is not healthy. Now, am I saying that every human should only eat meat and dairy and not touch anything else? Of course not. Now, there are carnivores that do just that, and they often have massive health benefits and they feel amazing. But the reality is most people can't or, or won't do that because it's just too difficult. It's not sustainable. I mean, even I will treat myself to cold berries on a hot summer's day. And if I'm going to have a cheat food, I'd much rather have low sugar berries than, for example, um, high sugar bananas or mangoes. And I'd definitely rather have that than a highly processed sweet like Haribo or a drink a can of Coke. Now, hopefully this video has given you some insight into the potential risks of eating fruits, and particularly in high volumes. I'll leave it to you to find the balance that works for you, that one that's sustainable, enjoyable, and also supports your long-term health. Now, I wanna hear from you. Have you cut back on fruit? Did you notice any sort of difference? Comment below and share your experience. Remember that every comment helps someone find their journey towards better health. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next episode.